So we're going to go over the right coronary anatomy on this um, in this um, presentation. Here's a model of heart. Now this right coronary anatomy may have several type of different variants. The most common variant is where a little bit anteriorly, right where the cusp is, and I can show you where the cusp is. Um, this right coronary artery is coming off. So I'm going to remove this ventricle septum. And as you can see, it is right. So the cusp is a little lower here. The cusp line is somewhere here. And right coronary is coming off anteriorly. A lot of people on the angiogram, when they are actually evaluating this, they are seeing something like this. So this is the LAO view. Okay. So they can see the LAD coming off here. And as you can see, the non coronary cusp is now overlapping the right coronary cusp. But many times the catheter, because the patient is laying down, is somewhere in this non coronary cusp where the wire comes down here. So the only way to separate this non coronary cusp from right coronary cusp is when you go RAO. And if the catheter tip is, let me show that. The catheter tip is looking backwards, something like this. It is somewhere located in this direction. So you want to clock it until it rotates like this and start looking this way. The catheter tip starts looking this way. So now you're in the right cornicus and you know it is somewhere around here. That is the most common location of the right coronary artery. Once you find the right coronary artery, I'm gonna just show some of the initial anatomical views. The first branch that you see is usually this conus branch. This branch is coming out. Basically, it's a RV branch, right ventricular branch. It's just coming to the conus. The conus, if you remember, uh, is somewhere here, right where the pulmonic artery is arising. So it is supplying there. Frequently, the catheter can go in this, or this may be arising separately from another ostium here, like this. And the conus area is hyperexcitable. It has um, some of the neural crest cells, if you remember the embryology, that can that actually can lead to ventricular tachycardia. Older contrast agents or complete occlusion of this or isosmolar agents may cause a lot of viscosity and sludging of the blood flow to this area, and the person may go into RVOT uh, ventricular tachycardia. And sometimes it can uh, deep stabilize the patient. In this uh, model, the you can see there's this another branch that is coming off, and sometimes it, it tracks along the right coronary artery, and it looks like it is more proximally arising, as you can see in this view but it's just behind the right coronary artery. And this goes up and supplies the right atrium. And as well as it goes behind, you see this, this small vessel behind, coming behind. This is SA nodal branch, this one. So this SA nodal branch, uh, is also giving some supply to the right atrium. Frequently, this vessel can form a larger vessel, as you can see this, this uh, right over the left atrium. This traverses behind the aorta and connect to the circumflex artery somewhere here. This can come here 
over the left atrium and connect with the left circumflex artery. And this is called Kugel's artery. If uh, there is um, proximal or mid level occlusion, so this can get enlarged and supply the collaterals. So coming out, uh, you can see this proximal section of the, uh, the proximal segment of the RCA usually ends at the first marginal artery. RV marginal, these RV marginals, as you can see, this is RAO view on the coronary angiogram, are directed anteriorly. So how do you tell this is RV marginal? Because it goes anteriorly. How do you know it is not RV marginal, it is right coronary artery? The right coronary artery will go posteriorly in the RAO view. As you can see, it's going posteriorly. Frequently at the bottom here, there may be jumbled up vessels and you may have to do a portal view like this, which may separate the RV marginal from the right coronary artery. So right RAO portal view is very helpful in getting this bend. Uh, as we go this way, which is the AP or RAO cranial view, I usually take RAO cranial view in these patients uh, most of the times. Let me hide all of this stuff, the veins. You can see the veins just go along with the arteries all along. If you go in this view, which is areocranial view, or if you want to go AP cranial view, you can separate the ostium of the right PDA with the RPL. Okay, so you can clearly see this distinction. While RAO cranial view can also give you a little bit, but there's a little bit foreshortening here. And then RAO view frequently does not show you the ostium, as you can see in this view. It can show you the length of the right artery, uh, right PDA, but it will not show that. So how to get rid of this marginal, sometimes uh, overlapping this? You want to do a little caudal, little caudal like this. So just remember the bottom part of the vessels the, after the bend of the second uh, bend of the mid RCA, for that you want to give a little caudal view sometimes to see this distal vessel, but it's clearly foreshortened. Um, for the osteal view, you will need to get either a LAO view, which is this view, I'm going to show you. LAO view will give you the osteum, or sometimes a little caudal view this view, it will give you the ostium of the LAD, uh, of the RCA, sorry. The very steep LAO view is also recommended. As you can see, this will really give you the ostium like this. But this is almost 90 degrees. Some of the IIs cannot go like this, but this is great for that. For nailing the ostium, as you can see, you wanna be a little AP portal view. And that will help you nail the ostium, AP caudal, sometimes a little caudal, just the AP caudal. Same thing for left main, a little AP or LAO with a little caudal. So I've seen people nailing the ostium like this, like this. This will not give you that. This view is giving you the hole uh, that you, that through which you can look at. But the AP caudal is a little bit. So my experience has been AP caudal, a slight AP caudal will give you a better view. Of this vessel. Anyway, we were talking about the midsection of the right coronary artery. And then right after the bend here, you will have this distal right coronary artery. Distal right coronary artery, you may, uh, may have sometimes a RV marginal coming out of the right uh, distal right coronary artery, which is a variant, and it may go and become right PDA here. And it, it, see, it looks like the vessel is going um, is arising very proximal in the distal segment of the right coronary artery. This, uh, this is a variant. Usually it, arise, it has a ramus also supplying uh, some, some segment or LAD, which is a wraparound giving the distal segment because this usually gives the mid section of the right coronary artery. And you may have a very rudimentary PDA. Anyway, most common uh, form is this right PDA, which is giving septal branches. 
and then right PL branches start arising, which are supplying the posterior wall here in this direction. Okay, so this is first PL branch, second PL branch. This is the AV nodal branch, which arises. Sometimes there are two branches, three branches, and sometimes they're not visible. Frequently, if there's an occlusion here, patient can go into complete heart block. So frequently when I'm putting a stent like this, I'm very careful that I don't occlude this. So you can put a balloon there or you can put a wire there so that it doesn't get occluded because if it does, a uh, patient can go into complete or incomplete heart block. Uh, there's no incomplete heart block terminology means like Mobitz type two blocks. Uh, there's a frequent issue that which I think it should be called AV continuation of the right coronary artery is that sometimes people stand here in this area and they call it its PL branch stenting. Now this is because of the billing issue that you know you have to change the coding because PL branches and the PDA branches are considered branches of the right coronary artery. Um, RV branches are also right coronary artery branches. So the coding changes for the stenting. The main vessel doesn't matter how many stents you put in, there's just one code, billing code for that. But the right PD and PL branches have separate codes and locations. So this PL branch may end up sometimes giving collaterals to the circ artery on this side here. And the septal branches may give up some branches or collaterals to the LAD artery. The distal collaterals are usually epicardial collaterals. These are septal collaterals. These PL branches are also epicardial collaterals. All right, please let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, this is about just a model of right coronary artery. I'm going to just show you an angiogram of this. And an angiogram in real life, it looks very different uh, based on what the vessels are be becoming opacified. This is a transfemoral catheterization, as you can see. And I'm going to hold it somewhere here. This branch that is coming off like this is a conus branch, while this branch that is arising right after that is a atrial branch, which is giving a branch backwards. You cannot really tell is it backwards or forwards, but just by experience, this left-sided branch is backwards. And this branch that is going arising and going upwards is a synodal branch, while this is atrial branch. Now, this atrial branch can make that Kugel artery. If you keep on looking, there is this small faint, faint RV branch, and then there's this large RV branch. This is usually going to the anterior wall, but if it goes like beneath and towards the PDA groove, it may be supplying that. And then here you can see that this person has some disease in the proximal segment, which is like 25%, then mid-segment again, 25 And then here's some moderate disease maybe. Uh, and then you can see the PDA arising here. And PDA also has some disease there with some PLV branches arising one and two. And these are supplying the posterior wall of the left ventricle. Uh, if you see this, this is a picture on the right anterior oblique angle, cranial angle. Here you can see this stenosis much worse here. It's looking not 25%, but kind of 50%. So I take an average, it's like 40% uh, in two views. And if it goes down, as you can see, there's much more disease here. And then distal vessel has more disease, as you can see in this view. Because it's foreshortened, of course, it will look worse in the foreshortened view. So I do not really comment on the stenosis in this view. I only comment on the stenosis when it is not foreshortened. 
uh, or if it is a oblique view of that uh, area where it can straighten up. You can see the RV marginal, this is RO view. Where would it go? It will go anteriorly. And the posteriorly going vessel is the right coronary artery. And then you can see this AV groove going like this. And this is all PL branches arising from there. So one, two branches. And this is that PDA branch arising from here. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have other questions. I, I make these videos based on some fellows or residents asking any specific questions. Uh, thank you so much.